guys, welcome back to another episode of the Super Real Estate Bros Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Brandon Snyder, team leader of Selling with the Snyder Group, brokered by EXP in the Greater Houston area. And this is some guy. Dave, your mortgage guy. Dot com. Chin Tan, you didn't do the finger wag. Okay, well this is Chin Tan, and he's obviously not participating today. So, um, Chin Tan, I guess just tell everybody who you are since you are I'm, I'm told to stay quiet. I'm Chin Tan Patel with Kina Inspections, everything to do with inspections, property he, inspections. That he is. signed an NDA. He's, he told <laughs> me he couldn't say anything. Welcome to the podcast, we sign NDAs here. Well, the realtors tell the, the home inspectors to stay quiet, right? That is the absolute... <laughs> Hey, I think we can start to sit right there. That's gold. If, you, if you're just listening, you can pretty much end the podcast now. That's everything you need to That's know. No, no, no. Don't, yes. don't hire a realtor that tells the inspector to be quiet. Right, right. There are Stay tuned. Out there, though. They do that. So today, we're going to be talking about a few different things. Uh, first and foremost, before we get into this, I want to thank our wonderful sponsor of this podcast, uh... Fidelity National, oh, this says Envision. Fidelity National Title, we're here. This is where we record our podcast. Thank you to our friends at Fidelity. And I don't know, Dave has an Envision Title book here. I, look, we don't know what's going on here. Anyway. Brandon's just getting us in trouble today. <laughs> <laughs> it's, going, it's going downhill. Yeah, right. it's, it's all downhill. Yeah, there you go. It's the Fidelity National. And if you, if you need Wi-Fi, they'll only work in the office. If you... So today we're gonna to go over something that I think uh, is really important, especially for first-time home buyers. Um, you know, even your seasoned home buyers uh, and sellers, we don't talk about this enough. Uh, what inspections look like? What's the most important things we're looking for? Like kind of primary things we're looking for in an inspection. We're gonna talk about something that we're really passionate about, which is uh, first-time home buyers, FHA loans, and VA buyers. Uh, there's a lot of uh, specificity that comes with those buyers. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit as well about, as a seller, what you can do to prevent a 80-page inspection report. Oh, God. Uh, I just, I, I literally got scared thinking about it. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do to make the option period and negotiations go a lot easier before yeah. an inspector even walks in the door. So, first and foremost, let's talk about what we talked about earlier, which is why it's important to disclose everything. Like why we should be talking about what's on the inspection report right. instead of being worried about it killing a deal. Yeah, I mean, um, whether it's a first time home buyer or seasoned buyer, right? Whenever you, they're buying the property, they probably just walked into it once or twice and just looked at everything from what they are looking for in the house perspective. But when it comes to technical stuff, how old the house is, whether it's brand new or older house, right? There are things that's gonna happen as the house gets older, there's always things that's happening and home inspector's job is to bring the black and white to the buyer and tell them what they're dealing with now whether it's new construction or older home there we find stuff all the time like literally all the time and sometimes we find new construction to be in a worse shape than the recent home. so you know it's it's just to bring the reality in front of everyone and uh, they should know i mean they should know what they're buying what uh <clears throat> no that's a great point so give me some examples of things that you know as an inspector you're seeing that are an issue for a home that the eye test of a home buyer walking and saying hey it looks great like the right. home doesn't need anything so what are some things that you know or behind the scenes or behind the wall well um <laughs> being in houston we have two major problems which is foundation and roof because roof weathers a lot because of the weather we have and foundation because of the soil conditions we have. But at the same time, I think the foundation issue is misunderstood and misinterpreted the most. Okay. Like a lot of home inspectors, you know, misinterpret or just want to cover their back. So they, they pad the report with further evaluation, further evaluation, further evaluation, and it doesn't help. It scares the buyers. But coming back to from buyer's perspective, what they underestimate stuff is what's not seen, which is plumbing, electrical, and mechanical, which is usually in the attic, and you know, they don't really literally go to those things to see. Okay. Uh, the foundation, they'll probably see it because there's some cracks here and there, and then they panic. Sometimes those are not even relevant to foundation, but- It's regularly settled with that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Or, or it, can, it could be just weather contraction on the drywall and whatnot. So, yeah. I want to unpack that real quick. So, um, you know, a lot of our first-time home buyers, we try and educate them when we do the consultation, hey, 
you're gonna see things like corner pops and honeycombing. Mm -hmm. We actually just had one, you did an inspection a few weeks ago where um, there was honeycombing and you could actually see the post-tension cable coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, what's honeycombing? Honeycombing, um, if you've ever eaten honeycomb cereal, oh, yeah. it's not like that. Oh. Um, <laughs> so honeycombing is a spot on the foundation where it opens up and it looks like like a like a gerbil started eating at the foundation and it's it's circular little parts inside it looks it it doesn't look like honeycombs at all but it looks like honeycombs <laughs> so uh the honeycombing is really important to understand because when we're looking at this from a is my foundation screwed honeycombing is actually pretty normal because of the way that the post tension uh cables are put into the the foundation right now Here's where we see problems. If there's honeycombing and then there's a large, larger than hairline crack going up the side of the brick, we have a problem. Um, if the floor is uneven, we have a problem. And these are things that you don't know until you know. You don't right. know until you get the, the inspection done. And when we talk about, we were talking about earlier, like killing a deal or someone saying, well, don't tell them everything. Well, let's tell them everything. If we give them the expectation up front of like, hey, these are the things that we're gonna see especially depending on age of home. If it's a 50 year old home, you're gonna see a ton of crap. Right. You're gonna see things, you know, code issues and et cetera. So it's really important that we set the expectation up front so that when the inspector goes in and says, hey, there's, there's things we need to address, right? Not, hey, this house is on fire, because I've seen that. I've had inspect inspectors go out and say, oh my God, this house is a mess, don't buy it. And it was things that could have been remedied, but it's gonna cost money. So let's talk about that for a minute, Dave, because this this kind of comes into your world. Yeah. So let's say that the foundation needs some work. Let's say that we need some things done and we've negotiated for them to fix it. How do we, uh, do they, can they get a credit for it? What does that look like? Well, and let's talk about mortgages as a whole and kind of what's required, right? So when an appraiser is going out to the home, he's not inspecting the home, right? So he would say, hey, it's gonna need a new roof in three years. That doesn't mean that a FHA or a VA or a conventional loan appraisal is gonna say they need a new roof right away. Right. So those are two different things. <clears throat> the number one thing is, can it get finance as is, right? If it has severe foundation issues and the appraiser mentions that it has to be remedied in advance of closing. Um, Normal settlement is normal for the Houston area as a whole. So sometimes people freak out just seeing any cracks and we all know that there are gonna be cracks, even in new construction homes. Um, the biggest thing appraisers are gonna address on FHA is gonna be rotten wood on the outside. Mm -hmm. So for, for whatever reason, FHA has a real issue with rotten wood. If it has rotten wood, they're most likely gonna suggest it needs to be handled. All appraisals are gonna require flooring. You yep. can't just not have flooring, so that's something to think about. Um, outside of that, it's really gonna be up to the appraiser to mention something that's concerning for them. You know, holes in drywall are an issue. If there was a leak that doesn't look like it's been fixed, that's gonna be addressed. Um, <clears throat> like where you see a severe watermark or it starts to sag, things like that. But the biggest thing is gonna be, gotta have flooring. Um, can't have any wood rot if it's FHA. And then just, it's really more of a case by case. So let, let's dig into that a little bit more. So, okay, so let's say that <clears throat> the foundation is gonna need some work, but like, it's not like it's completely shot. Let's use a perfect example. So we, we all have a file together that um, they're closing in a couple of weeks. So if you're watching this, we're gonna talk about you for a minute. And so they had honeycombing on the outside. And so um, the option, uh, it was actually under warranty because it was still like within its, Warranty. Six, six, seven years old? Yeah, not so even. I, less than I, 10, yeah. The yeah. foundation had a warranty. Yeah, yeah, so the honeycomb actually got fixed by the builder, but if there's no warranty left, you can actually get a credit for some of these items as long as it's gonna get through the appraisal. You can get a credit for these items. That's kind of what I was talking about is, you know, if let's say that you're in, in, in this marketplace with what we're seeing with interest rates, it's really important to get as much money at closing as possible to either buy down the rate or pay your closing costs. You can. Do other things lower that your money. bottom line exactly. right yeah lower your bottom line and so what we're seeing is that credits are being offered by sellers they weren't two years ago it was like a nightmare to get one <laughs> now they are and so that helps your bottom line so something that if you see it in an inspection and let's say it's something that you're willing to address maybe you're pretty handy or you're like hey like it's not a big deal do it down the road spoiler alert no one ever does it down the road but <laughs> um <laughs> that's a whole nother episode um 
it's really important to at least ask for that credit if they're like, hey, no, I won't fix it. Well, cool, give me money for it. And I think that that's really important. Correct, and it's gonna be used in the form of paying toward your closing costs, right? right. So if it's, let's say the electrical box is gonna need $1,000 worth of work. Seller is gonna give you a credit at closing for $1,000. That's reducing your bottom line for how much you need at closing by $1,000. Yep. Allowing you to have the money to do the repairs immediately because no one does it down the road like Brandon just pointed out. <laughs> Chintan, let's talk about something real quick. So we've talked about um, foundation, we've talked about roof as being kind of major components of an inspection. Um, what else are we missing? So <clears throat> the way track standard works, they require us to lump in a lot of stuff, right? But I always emphasize on five major systems because if those five major systems check out or you know we identify them, we take care of bulk of the problems. And that is foundation, roof, electrical system, plumbing system, and mechanical system. And when I say mechanical, I mean air conditioning, heating, and the ductwork, right? Once we have those five addressed, I think the rest of it is medi like you know manageable. People can live with it, do it down the road, which nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, look, I, I'm not trying to like to like dog on people here, but like it, it's the truth. Like people are busy. People yeah. have lives, and they're gonna move into a house and be like, I got all this money for closing, and I'm gonna go buy furniture with that money or whatever. Some people do the repairs. I've seen it. I had a client last year. Um, foundation work. It was actually one of our files. Foundation work needed to be done, and literally the week they moved in, they had people out there, um, or it was like a plumbing line that was. It was it was in Briar Forest, so it was, you know it's older pipes, and I think it was good for them. Yeah, so they they did the work, and anyway, um, <clears throat> I want to. Sorry, so I got two questions I really want to ask you yeah. that I think people at home are wondering. I'm buying a home. You're going to do the inspection. Are you cool if I spend the next four hours with you? overlooking your shoulder and going through it? Should I show up in the last 20 minutes so we can go over the report together? Should I wait for the report to be sent and then my realtor help me with it? Because this is one of the things that, I mean, obviously, right. me following you around behind you for the next four hours would be miserable for everybody involved. Yeah. But as a consumer feeling more comfortable, because sometimes you get that report, Brandon said it's 80 pages. Well, 79 and a half of them are not relevant. You're doing your job. Right. Which ones are the real things that concern me? So would you say, hey, it's okay to show up in the last 20 minutes or let me finish it, present it, you know, kind of give some yeah. advice to that home buyer so, out there? So, yeah, so any inspection takes us between three to four hours and we always recommend, if the buyer is local and able to come, we recommend they come towards last half an hour. Last half hour, perfect. Because we welcome them to come hang around but we don't want you on our back because that interrupts our process and we might miss something or we might not you know identify everything Great advice. so if you come last half an hour we identify major things walk you around show you and then the report follows and our report at least uh, specifically for us our report includes a lot of pictures we try to do one de like one picture per defect at least so it's a very visual you know and once you have seen the house and walked around with us the report makes a lot of sense because you will visualize what we are showing you in the pictures. And then, you know, we want, if we are in the transaction, we want to alleviate the work of the realtor and the lender and anybody else involved. So we want to do everything we can to address all the issues the, the buyer or the client has so that there's the least amount of questions afterwards. So let me ask well, you that, oh, go ahead. And sorry, Brandon, but let's say on that topic real quick, as a realtor, right and that home buyer would you and obviously i'm leaving under throwing or giving the softball to hit here but <laughs> what i mean as a realtor who's seeing inspection reports all the time that's really daunting and scary information for a home buyer assuming all these things so is the next piece of advice really waiting for you the expert to also look review it and talk to them about hey look nothing is ever up to code immediately after the electric yeah. sockets put in none of my electric sockets are up to code I need to buy a different house you know what I mean like you tell me what you think is the best advice for a home buyer versus I'm gonna answer this question with a question Chen Tan oh, okay. percentage wise how many agents show up to a inspection with their clients um 50 50 percent it's not good enough stay not, tuned not good enough. <laughs> okay one of the things that's really important is setting the expectation from the beginning. It can be a really daunting task to go through an inspection and be blindsided by things. If I show up to the inspection, I'm talking to the inspector and I say, hey, and mind you, we've used other inspectors in our career, but since working with Chintan, he's probably one of the most thorough and just 
calm. Like, he's like, hey, like, we have issues, but, like, this is how we're going to resolve them. So when we're going through the, the inspection process at the last 30 minutes with our clients, it's really important to go, hey, I've seen this before. This is where experience comes in. This is where hiring the right team to work for you comes in because we know what we've seen before. We've seen hundreds of inspection reports and we know now like what we should be looking for. What's and you mentioned something that I want to touch on is code. So a lot of buyers will buy a house and be like, oh, the piping is old from the 90s or hey, the electrical wiring's from the 90s. So and correct me if I'm wrong, but the code has is grandfathered in to the year it was built. Um, well, I mean, it's taken into consideration. Right. Okay. However, um, I, I want to say two things about the code, right? One thing is when it comes to safety items, people should not, you know. I agree with that. You know, under like underestimate that because it's a yep. safety. Anything else is, yes, of course, you're buying an older car. I mean, we don't have like, cars that are old enough that didn't have airbags, right? Yep. But that was once upon a time that existed. Yep. Now coming back to the code, I want to make this example because a lot of buyers confuse that they're confused in the sense that building code has everything in it. And builders use this all the time too, as a you know, as an argument. Right. So this is the point I want to make to people to understand. The building code says, I'm gonna use water heater as an example because it's very easy to understand. Building code says for every single family house, you must provide at least 30 gallon water heater. All right? That's what it says. And then it has a chart that says recommended water heater size based on the square feet of the house. Okay. Right? The reason I'm emphasizing this is because when you walk into a house which is 4,000 square feet and they have only, they never have 30 gallons, it's bigger, but they have only 30 gallons, they still met the code. So it's not always about the code, right? Builders, builders give you yeah. a lot more than that. Like they usually give you for 4,000 square feet, it's like 80 gallon, like 40 times two, or they have tankless now. Uh, but my point is, don't get hung up on the code. What's important is the term building standards. How good is the house? Like how good is it built, right? And yeah. the building standard is everything together. It's track standards, building code, and local building practices based on the weather we deal with and other elements we deal with. Right. You know? I'm, so I'm, what I'm not saying, I'm not saying like, we should just like excuse issues because it's a grandfather right. code. But what, I, what I'm bringing just, up is yeah. like, there's gonna be things, and this is part of the dance. This is part of the negotiation with the sellers. Right. There's gonna be things, and I always prep our clients with this. Hey, there's gonna be things we should absolutely go for. Safety issues, uh, major components of the house. Yeah, big ticket items. Right. Ticket items. Yeah. And then when it comes to the smaller items, nothing's nothing's little, nothing's insignificant, but when it comes to the smaller items, we need to make sure that we are uh, picking our battles. Right. Because if I send an amendment to an agent, to a seller, six pages long, they're gonna tell me to take a hike regardless. <clears throat> Especially you know your market, right? right? Know your market. If there was other offers on the table, if that home got a lot of traffic and now you go back with some type of asinine request, they may tell you to walk. Right, but when it comes to, and you were talking about it earlier, with builders, it's different. Like I, we, we had an inspection done the other day. There was a, a water leak. There were some other things that we needed to get, get addressed. And uh, as of this filming in a few hours, my wife will be going to do a blue tape walkthrough for that house. And I told her, I said, you need to be an ass because this is a $700,000 house. Correct. And so the, there's kind of a hit or miss with like, where you pick your battles, but I think it's really important to know if you set the expectation up front. Like I walked a house yesterday, we're writing an offer on the house knowing that the roof is older. We know that's gonna be a fixed cost for the buyers. Now in the in the process, if the rest of the house is pretty good, no major things other than the roof, of course we're gonna go, hey, can we get a credit for future roof stuff? And they're reasonable, so they're probably, like the buyers are reasonable, so they're probably gonna go spend that money to work on the roof. Right. But. The point being is that it's all about expectations and then clearly communicating the report and its findings. I, did that answer your question about like what, the realtor being involved and making sure that we set the expectations? Oh, we we're gonna have to rewind this because that question was like 20 minutes ago, so I don't, I don't remember. But, <laughs> but no, it is. And look, and that's you, you know, his job is to mention everything possible, cover yeah, yeah. all of his behind. 
the realtor and an experience and and professional and great realtor is going to go through that with you and say look these are the things i would advise <clears throat> to set you up to get the best situation per you know as perfect as possible know the market so you don't jeopardize asking for too much or assuming you can get and not knowing you could lose out on that house i'm gonna probably end with this thought or i had a thought tell me the absolute nastiest oh, inspection that you did where all this shit that was wrong and where you're like, man, it, this, this is a mess. Well, um, it's hard to remember now, <laughs> but we, I mean, we have seen everything. Like, you know, we, we even do rundown houses, right? Uh, like the distressed properties. But those are like investors who are buying it and they know what they're looking for. Right. House. But, but yeah, uh, I think the tenant occupied houses, if you talk about habitable houses, which are like almost livable. Mm -hmm. Uh, tenant occupied houses are the nightmares because people just don't have the ownership mindset and uh, perfectly good house 10 15 year old no major problem but a lot of small problems because it was not taken care of right and that's not, it's not mine hey yeah. screw it i'm not gonna do this work it's not my house well okay right. look if you're not gonna tell us like a gruesome like okay look, <laughs> we went to uh sunny side the other day oh, yeah. and it's a duplex being sold and you haven't done the inspection yet but we're probably gonna be writing an offer on it at the time of the shooting um shooting the video that sounded weird um <laughs> <laughs> i mean i wasn't sunny side um there may have been <laughs> yeah, yeah. so so it's a duplex and <clears throat> one side and it was it was actually really sad because it's a gorgeous duplex and then one side of it, um, they had to get evicted and they absolutely thrashed the house. I mean, oh, yeah. the doors got I kicked mean, in and, and it was crazy. And it was like, like knowing you, when you do the inspection on it, you're like, yeah, the major systems are fine, but the inside is absolutely destroyed. Yeah. I mean, and luckily, like you talked about investors, we, we haven't walked any houses with like, you know, feces or anything like that, like that. We haven't gotten, we haven't, we haven't walked trap houses in a while, but um, I think that, I think that realistically for us, the only I had a I had a seventy two page inspection a couple years ago and that's that's up wow. there. Like normally my goal is like if depending on the size of the house because you know the bigger the house the longer the inspection. Right. But uh, I think my <laughs> goal is like under forty pages for like a ten to thirty year old house and that's like good we want that. If it's new construction I want under twenty five. I don't want to have to like if it's over twenty five that means we have problems. But I think that's a good rule of thumb because I think if you don't know as a, as a buyer coming in, right, is I'm only expecting three pages and none of them are three pages to right. begin with, right? You have better yeah, expectations. Sticker shock. Well, and let me ask you this, and this is a term I had heard or an idea and I always wondered about it. If you're a seller with an older home, mm -hmm. what are the thoughts on doing an inspection in advance of listing it? Yeah, exactly. So you know where you're working, right? And I don't think this is a topic that's almost ever discussed. Right is now you're prepared for what's going to be on that report and what you're going to negotiate or possibly some easy items to maybe fix yeah to put you in the best position so what are your thoughts on that hold on hold on if you can read this sellers if you can read this you can't because i write like crap and it's far away what does it say chintan cocking <laughs> that's it episode's done cock your damn house is that gonna be that's the name, that be the name? <laughs> The name of the to be talk your damn house Cock because your house if you are a seller, if you are a seller, <laughs> sorry, Tim Tim, I just, I have to, this is my soapbox. Yeah. If you, you are a seller and you don't look at the outside of your house when you walk in and then you wonder why there's water damage in your windows when your inspection comes back and the buyer's asking for a crap ton of credit or repairs, take care of your house, maintenance it regularly. Caulking is one of the most common things I see on an inspection report and it's not hard to do. There yeah. you go. And take care of the house. Don't assume like, yeah, it's been fine for me. It'll be fine for the next person. Well, the next person doesn't want your old ass stuff. All right. So what do sellers do? Tell us, Chins. So sellers in this market now, I mean, two years ago, it was a different story. Um, but this market with the change, you know, balanced market, they should consider, especially for older homes, they should consider a pre-listing uh, inspection so that they know big ticket items which are underlying issues which will come up. Right? And they have an opportunity to either address it beforehand or at least be aware of it that it's going to come up and have the expectations managed. Mm -hmm. right? Now, going to the caulking subject, <laughs> sealant. We call oh, it man. sealant. <laughs> That's why we call it sealant. Well, us um, normal folk call it caulking, okay? <laughs> I'm not so, even saying it. <laughs> I, I have a phrase that everything 
that puts the house together wears out before the house itself, all right? Everything gets replaced over time, repairs over time, right? So the caulking in particular has a lifespan of about seven to 10 years. Apply, all right? So if you're dealing with any house, which is like five or seven years, you're gonna see cracks and all that on the caulking, yeah. and it's time for them to redo it. Yeah, like windows just, too, right? Yeah, like exactly. like resealing around the windows yep. just to prevent water damage. Like it, it's something we see a lot, especially in older homes. Like the, you'll see like a thirty year old home, and it's like okay, so you obviously didn't take care of the house because like you have yeah like using the wood thing. rot in the in interior, and it's like well that's either from caulking or that's from the brick or yeah. I mean or it's, some sort of air yeah, openings. Yo. Okay, let's round third here. We're gonna we're gonna. Well, I have a question for you. Okay. Me. Oh no. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this. So what is a must-have inspection for VA loans? I guess we're gonna- Yeah, that's what that, we're rounding okay. third in. Right, so let's, let's talk, so let's, talk, let's talk VA loans. We talked about FHA and what they're really looking for. Let's talk, let's talk VA loans. Let's talk about the most important thing, especially <clears throat> when we have a ton Cor of trees. Correct. So on a VA loan, it is required that you have what's called a termite report done. WDI, which is wood. Destroying Isn't that insects. the stuff you spray? Destroying like, insects. aren't you supposed to spray your whole house? For the W doors? Yeah, WDI. No, WD40. Oh, WD40. It's, it's not blinker fluid. I don't think so. Uh, so you, so you have to have a clean termite report. Let's yep. talk about that. Clean. So clean is the key word. In fact, you can use that term because even if the home doesn't have termites, but has issues that are conducive to termites, right. high soil to the house, a tree is too close. If those things are on the report and the buyer is using a VA loan, they must be rectified. Then another report done showing that has been resolved and it's a clean, nothing conducive, no sign of termites. And the seller is responsible for these things. Yes. So here's the great thing. If you are a VA buyer, which means you are taking your hard earned government loan and buying a house with that. Yep. The seller is required to remedy those things before closing on the home. And the appraiser actually has to go back out and check that these things have been remedied. Now here's the most important thing. This happens after you go under contract. So once we get the WDI report and the inspection report, we're gonna know exactly what needs to be done. A lot of the times, especially in this market now, you're already under contract. A seller's not gonna wanna have to go through this song and dance with someone else, mm -hmm. especially because What's going to happen is if we fall out of contract, somebody's gonna call me and say, hey, why'd you fall out of contract? I get to tell them, I'm not gonna be a jerk. I'm saying, hey, like the inspection happened, this wasn't remedied, et cetera. So VA loans, we're talking about WDI reports, we're talking about the, so what, what, are, what are wood destroying insects? We know termites the easy one. Is there, yeah. is there like an ant or something that? So um, the wood destroying insect terminology actually covers about eight different insects or bugs. Right, termites, carpenter ants, drywood termites, and you know, few um, few flies like bugs. Let's let's call them bugs. Those um, flies that eat wood. Termite. Well, there are yeah. Those flies sound terrible. Yeah, they make big holes. <laughs> Jesus. But but the generally commonly known term is termites because those are the most common ones, and we have subterranean termites in you know, plentiful in Texas. And we just had one on the inspection. Jeez. And that was, a, that was the weirdest one though. It was, so it was weird because the house was a uh, pyramid, but it had a, uh, it had a cement foundation on the back end of the house. Uh, so it was, a, it was a complete remodel. And so um, there was termites and you could see them active termites. Yep. The seller wasn't able to remedy them mm. or he wasn't he willing was, to. Yeah. He was, I mean, well, he was perfectly able to, he just didn't want to. He didn't want to, yeah. Okay. So if, uh, let's say that we are, um, and this is a question for Dave, let's say that we're mid, mid contract, we're out of option period, mm -hmm. and the appraiser comes back out and says these things haven't been remedied. What are our remedies as a buyer so that we can either, can we back out of the contract? Can we push closing back? What can we do? Yeah, absolutely. So if an appraiser mentions anything that's a lender specific repair, right? So he'll put it on the report. At that point, it has to be done before closing, he's gonna go back out to the property and document, let's say, uh, that there was holes in the drywall or there was no flooring. He's gonna go back, you have to document that before closing. If the seller, you know, at the end of the day, it's all gonna fall on the seller at that point because it's been identified on the appraisal. So, seller's gonna to have to do the work, you could push back closing. Um, depending on where you are in the 
the loan process and the loan type, you could get the loan denied because it's not, you're not able to get financing right. at home as is. So you definitely have some options as a buyer. You have some options to be able to put that pressure on the seller, like you said, because the truth of the matter is a lot of these options, <coughs> excuse me, items are gonna come up on the next buyer. Yep. If an appraiser already mentioned it and right on an FHA deal, that's gonna come up. VA is gonna come up like conventional, most likely depending on the topic. So it needs to get rectified one way or the other. I love it. This has been super helpful because like we, we do this on a ground ground level every day, but I think one of the things that a lot of people fail to realize is that there's a lot of intricacies to inspections. It's not just, hey, some guy's gonna come look and poke all the holes in the house. I think as a seller, just kind of wrap this all up, as a seller, you should be prepared. You should take a look at your house, get Correct. a pre-listing inspection. It's something that, that we'll partner with you as a listing team and offer. I think that it's something you should definitely look at because you wanna know what's wrong with your house so that way you can uh, spearhead that and get a lot of it done before a potential buyer comes in and makes your your week a headache especially people with busy lives um you know because i'm busy he's busy <laughs> he's busy i'm sorry i had to bring it back um but also from a buyer perspective i think that they need to know like hey we're here to educate you the inspector is here to make sure that you are aware of the defects in the house the severity of the defects is going to be up to um, you know, how bad it is with right. major components. But most of the time, all the cosmetic stuff we get, take, get taken care of or get credits for right. or whatever. But, um, well, I know what's, what's a big deal and what's right. not. I think the feeling is that if I don't know, I'm assuming all 50 pages of that report are a big deal. This home is going to fall apart. And that's not the case. No, absolutely. Right. So I think it's really important to be educated, not just by your inspector, but also by your agent and your lender and things you should be looking for. Um, you know, when you're when you're purchasing a home and or selling a home. So that being said, uh, Chintan, how can people get a hold of you if they want to book an inspection? They want to follow you on social media. They want to see see you take pictures of dogs and and houses that you inspect and food that you eat. I don't know if you eat food. I've never seen you eat in my life. <laughs> um, the, we have a website. You can book it straight from the website. Uh, the website is keeneyeinspections.net. That is K-E-E-N-E-Y-E inspections.net. Or you can call us, 832-422-2332, or text us. What about social me. media? Where do they follow you on social media? Social media, we have Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. You just wow. look me up, Chintan Patrol, oh. and you'll find it. Hold on. And we, we got a badass yes. over here. <laughs> uh, if, again, his website is C-A-U-L-K-I-N-G.net, caulking.net. Oh, I should have one. <laughs> Dave, how can people get a hold of you if they want to apply for a loan or ask you questions about uh, all kinds of loan stuff? Absolutely. So I'm Dave, your mortgage guy everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube specifically, uh, and the website even. Uh, this is a classy move. Dave, your mortgage guy dot com. Yes, we got it. This, <laughs> if, if we're just gonna, we're gonna, I don't know what's going on there. Don't cross streams. Um, if you want to follow uh, us, you don't have to, don't feel obligated after listening to these rock stars, but at Selling with the Snyder Group, pretty much everywhere. You can follow the Super Real Estate Bros podcast where all podcasts are being uh, streamed. You can find us on YouTube at Selling with the Snyder Group or at Dave Your Mortgage Guy. And you can also contact us directly. We'll have our information below. If you need any help in the greater Houston area or across the continental United States or internationally, because we have international partners, feel free to contact us at Selling with the Snyder Group. We will see y'all next time. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you.